Hello my friends, welcome again to my video channel. Today we will continue our work on the Drake TR7. We have seen that there are several problems with contacts. As I always say, such transceivers have three problems. Contacts, contacts and contacts. So I will take out now every single board, clean the contact, check it, look for any other faults, also check the connectors on the rear side. They have some connectors, for example, the connector for the loudspeaker have automatic switching over between internal and external loudspeaker. I've seen there's also something not okay. The contacts have to be cleaned from the switch over contact. Also the transmit receive relay I will take out and other things. I don't show you, show you all things in detail. It's boring. You know how to do it. I will only show it uh, as an example. At, let me say one or two of these boards. By the way, when uh, removing the PCBs from the TR7, uh, we need a little bit of force on them. There are holes in it. These holes are designed for such a hook. I bended these hooks myself from the wire of a cloth hanger. They are sometimes made of, of a simple wire, but this wire is very hard. I made this one, this fits perfectly into such a, a set of holes here and here. So you, you can see it's rather easy to get it out. If the distance is not exactly spaced, I have two units, separate units, so I can use it for, for different purposes. When taking out such a board, it's necessary to unplug the coaxial plug. It's a very simple one. The center wire is uh, blank and it is fed into this plug and there's a small counter contact here. This is very, very touchy and if it is bended it's difficult to get it back so be careful. But now then the circuit board can be taken out. These contacts are uh, should, should be checked after some decades whether they are okay and the cleaning is rather simple. I take a, a pipe cleaner, add some drops of contact cleaner to it, use a contact cleaner of your choice and then simply put it into the contact. Then you can see it's rather easy to, to clean it. There's an option. This is an interdental brush or a or floss head. They also can be used for this purpose. They have a diameter of two or three millimeters. But in the moment I use a pipe cleaner, I think it's a little bit better for this purpose. Do it for all contacts, contact by contact. Be patient, drink a glass of wine or similar, switch the radio on and listen to the music and do the work contact by contact. When you're ready with the whole set of contacts, well, we always pinch off some centimeters, then we use a contact spray, wash the cleaner and then continue the work by taking rubbing out washing out the residues of the cleaner turn it around a little bit after a set of contacts then we pinch it off and continue here we can see the, the counter contacts is a row of pins. They can be cleaned using a cotton swab or similar. Of course, uh, I will add some contact cleaner to it and then pin by pin can be cleaned. It's a little bit of difficult work. It's not so easily to, to get access to it, but they are rather shiny. So I think it's uh, it will be not a problem. An optical inspection is also important, also with the contacts. 
we just have clean to see whether they are not bended. Sometimes it happens that they are bended. So we can do also a small repair if necessary. Now I'm just working on the filter board. And as I have assumed in the first check, there are two CW filters installed, SL300 and SL500. This is a 2300 Hz filter for SSB and here we have the 6000 Hz filters for AM. These two are okay. One of these is also okay. The owner gave me a separate filter. He wrote on it 1800 Hz. Have a look into it. SL1800. And I will swap one of these CW filters by this because it makes no sense in my opinion to have a 300 Hz and a 500 Hz filter. It's, it's better to have uh, the 1800 Hz filter uh, instead of one of these. I will talk to the owner which of these filters I have to swap. The owner told me he wants to replace the uh, small filter, the SL300, so I swapped it with the SL1800. We have here the SSB filter, 2300 Hz. This is position A, 1800 for narrow band SSB reception. This is SL500 now, position B for CW operation or many uh, other digital modes also. And here we have the SL6000, the AM filter for AM reception. That's what the owner wanted and the SL300, it's a rather narrow filter and not, not so convenient. Okay, I'm not a CW guy, but the new owner uh, also makes CW, so he, he wanted it. Well, that's it. I will replace it into the transceiver. A small hint here we have the uh, contact strip. It's important that this strip here has contact to the uh, to the chassis, so it's a good idea to bend it a little bit up in this direction, so we have uh, contact when we uh, set it into the case. It's it's important to have contact to the to the housing for a better shielding. I set the filter board in, also the noise banker and the mixer board. I removed this shield and now I have access to the other boards. I will take them out, some optical checks, cleaning the contacts and reinserting them again. After cleaning all the contacts of the PCB boards, of the plugged boards, the contacts were all uh, clean, shiny, no signs of corrosion. Also the uh, solder connections on the mm, plugs were also okay. So I don't think that there is a problem. Now I'm focusing on the transmit receive relay. This, it's rather easy to take it out. The nose which uh, fixes it is, is, is here. There's a hole and the nose is here on the side. Same on the other side which is also a uh, nose here. To clean the contacts I use some blotting paper. It's a little bit uh, thicker and a little bit more rough than the standard printer paper. I cut off a small strip and then I squeeze the strip between the contacts. It's a possibility to, to activate the relay with a finger. When this contact is in, I take a contact cleaner, some drops. And move it back and forth. This is a normal close contact for receive. And then on this side, it could be an idea to, to use 12 volt to activate it. But I only do it here with the manual squeezing the contacts with the finger. It's also it's also good. Oh, there is something here. And the transmit contact. 
now it's it's okay seems that this is a contact where the power goes over it and then I use a contact wash to clean it now I want to replace these pots by better uh, 25 turn pots I got them I have to take out this uh, board it's necessary to un screw also these two I think one is a transistor the other one is a voltage stabilizer one is isolated as I see for this purpose it's necessary to uh, remove the front panel especially due to this additional board here otherwise I have no access to it I will unscrew them and then I can take out this board and now we have the uh, family affair these are six new ones these are 25 turn pots burns 10k they are pin compatible three pins which fit into the old uh, drills can easily be removed I think only the 10 volt needs a little bit of uh, uh, tweaking because the pin is on the other side that maybe is a reason why this uh, <coughs> trim pot is mounted in such a way when I bend it back okay <laughs> you see uh, the flat side is here for all these and here's a flat side on the other side so this uh, pot is installed by 180 degrees <coughs> I don't know why maybe there's something to do with the uh, PCP layout there was a problem with the layout as it looks well for this work such a PCP holder is very useful I can uh, fix this PCP turn it around rather easily and then I can unsolder it and the best to use here is a, a desoldering pump it makes it a little bit easier to continue you know it and so on and so on the pots are rolled out with the desoldering pump it's rather easy if you see here for the plus 10 volt this pot has a different has different drills bigger diameter than the other ones and a different uh, uh, pin layout so when I install this trim pot and the screw the setting knob is on the on the wrong side for the other one it's it's correct when I install them as the pin layout is it looks like this that's okay well it's a little bit too big but it doesn't matter it the wire is long enough they can be installed all here and for this I have to to drill a new hole or what whatever I need I think I will drill a new hole in it instead of the hole here for the center conductor I will drill it higher and then I can also install this pot or I will install it here I have to look to the layout mm -hmm. but now I have seen it's not so easy to drill a hole in it because there is a, a trace I would have to interrupt this trace hmm. could be a solution different solution I tried is simply to, to bend these contacts of the trim pot so I can install this trim pot to these holes it's also possible a possible solution it's mechanically okay of course uh, it, it could be bended away a little bit but it, I think it's not not so, <coughs> not so critical I don't need a, a brute force on the screw to, uh, to adjust it I think there's a better solution I simply solder this pot in this way I fix it and I solder it no, I could solder it very easily 
Das Part hier also. Und now, let's have a look at it. Okay. And when I align it, I think it's not a big problem. Now it is stable enough. The problem is a screwdriver. It is too big. Ah, okay, now I can align it and it's stable. I don't need to drill a hole in it. The new trim parts are in place. They are not absolutely flat on the PCB as we can see because there are some components, resistors. These uh, parts are a little bit too big. There are smaller ones on the market but I don't like these miniature types. I prefer the bigger ones and it's not a problem. It's not a, a, a beauty contest. It has to be uh, electrically and mechanically okay and it is. Now I can reinstall this part into the TR7. The electrolytic caps here and here uh, seem to be okay. I don't see any signs of damage, so I don't don't swap them. Very important, this is a transformer for the DC converter. This uh, loop has to be in place. It prevents any stray fields, magnetic stray fields. And sometimes this uh, core breaks and the part is lost. But uh, in the moment we don't have a problem here with this. So we can uh, reinstall it now. The board is in place again. I adjusted this part on the right side for 10 volts on this rail, as it should be. I adjusted USB and LSB, those two settings here for a reasonable uh, sound and pitch. For USB and LSB reception with a with a calibrator that works, but I have found that the receiver is absolutely deaf. With a calibrator and also when using an external signal generator, the short plug on the rear side is here, which is necessary to have a connection between the external antenna and the internal antenna of the TR7. But there's no absolutely no S meter deflection. I need an input voltage of several millivolts, not microvolts, millivolts to get the S meter moving up. So there is something wrong in the RX path. The previous owner gave a note. I read here that the diode CR1402 has been measured. There are some replacement diodes. This is generally a weak point of this uh, transceiver. There are some switching diodes here on the, uh, it's a high pass. They are the switching diodes between receive and transmit. Maybe they are a little bit, uh, or they are, are faulty or not. I will check it because this is a point which could affect so, uh, the calibrator and also an external signal. Well, you see, a lot of work has to be done. And of course, when I ended this project, a realignment not only of these pots here, I think a complete realignment is a good idea. But first, I have to locate and isolate the problem with the reception. And now we are at the end of part two of the series about this TR7. We have seen the receiver is deaf. The owner, the pre one of the previous owners provided a set of diodes, pin diodes for the receive path. Maybe that's the reason. I have to check these diodes. Up to now, I didn't uh, check to transmit. But to make the uh, spare parts complete, I found here a small bag with final transistors and driver transistors. They have, have the same color coding, so they seem matched. Seems to be the original transistors. I hope this does not mean that also the PA or the driver is uh, out of order. Hopefully not. Anyhow, stay tuned, stay healthy, see you on this channel.